Hello friends. Today let's go to the 12th session of the video lecture series on learning disabilities. Today we are going to see about activities for improving. What are the activities that we can give them on a daily basis, on a fun basis, on a regular basis uh, to improve their writing. Again, writing is the most uh, difficult or most disinteresting part for a child. If you ask the child to say something, the child will say very happily. Second, I mean, the next difficult level is reading. Reading and writing are something that, you know, in my study when I was doing, I was able to understand in, in these two areas, the disability level was very high. I was assessing the disability level of the children in every area, in memory, in discrimination, in spelling, and so actually in spelling, reading, and writing. And very poor was writing. Because, I mean, that, that's how, even if you ask us, okay, where we can speak, but it, when it comes to writing, it needs a little more of an effort. You cannot just like, just like that write whatever comes to your mind. You know, there is a structure, there is a little more professional way of writing, right? And there has to be a, uh, a format. So this, the children with learning disability find it very difficult and they find it very boring also. Uh, it may be because of the finger motor coordination they have the problem or because of the uh, errors uh, that they have because of memory they may not be able to recollect and moreover when writing there is one more thing after you write it is recorded it is documented so there is all possibility of finding out their mistakes very much the mistakes can be pinpointed and pointed out whereas if you if a child is asked to say something that time it goes finish Okay, and uh, so I mean the child may feel bad if the child is uh, uh, scolded by the teacher at that time, but then yeah, the child will forget. But these things are recorded, it is a document. It is again and again it is taken by the child and the mother and the teachers and, and the page is opened and then we say see look at the way you have written. So it is a record, it is remaining there forever. Therefore the child is very scared of writing. So there are many things that why the, there is so much of inhibition and the disability level is more in writing is because of one is fear, well, fear of ridicule, fear of insult. Another one is fear of failure itself. Okay, and another one is that you know uh, the finger motor problems or memory problem or basically uh, to write itself. It can be called specifically called as dysgraphia, as I have told you. Anyway, so therefore writing is very important, but. In my study, what I saw, simple methods like this, when the parents and teachers and the, my volunteers were able to teach them in a very interesting manner, uh, the improvement level was much high also. So which means they are able to, once they are able to, uh, you know, uh, see how they are able to write and they feel that uh, achievement and that success feeling is there, then they start writing much better. You know, let me try to get into the topic first. Okay, there are... Um, different methods I will I mean, tell very fast. One is called graph sheet method, graph sheet writing method, okay. Uh, so here, uh, I mean it is good uh, that some of them when they are writing, uh, it, it may go in one direction and the letters may be very very big or they do not know how to space it, they do not know the formation at all. So that may be the problem for them. For such children, we really have, can use this graph sheet writing method where a child is trained to write a single letter in the small square Square of a graph, you know, a graph sheet, right? In that small square of that graph, they have to write one letter. They should not write. They, they, they have to fit in, fit that letter inside that only. It should not go beyond and uh, uh, lesser than that. So they are, uh, they are trained to write it inside. So like that, each and every letter will be written in the singular small small boxes. So that is one training we'll have to give. Okay, so each day we can give them training. So let them write for half an hour and once they have done, okay, don't make them write too much, they get exhausted. So just half an hour or they have written something, okay, appreciate and they keep it. Tomorrow, next day, let them continue doing that. So like that, they will get used to how to write in the same shape. Okay, then they'll have to be trained like once they write a, a word, okay, we say Rani is playing. So once they have written Rani, then they, we'll have to teach them to leave a square, leave a box, 
okay which becomes the space and then go for the next word so between words they will have to leave a uh, one square has to be left a space so these are the two things that we will have to teach them while they are using this graph sheet writing method. So slowly they will know how to write properly, the formation, the size of the letters, everything they will know. So once they are getting used to it, once they are able to write it fast and everything, we can slowly remove the graph sheet and ask them to write it in the normal papers itself which they will be able to do. Alright, so that is the first method. It really is a good method. And the second method is, uh, we have to have a notebook for um, uh, for this uh, writing practice itself. Okay, a notebook for writing practice itself. And the child is asked to write three to four lines. Three to four lines copying from a notebook. Okay, another a storybook can be kept. That way the child will also learn some story. A storybook, don't keep to a uh, storybook with big letters. Okay, ask the child to just, uh, I mean, look at it and uh, write, okay, copy and write, copy and write the, uh, just three to four lines. And then the teacher or the parent has to see what are the omissions are there, additions are there, reversals are there, uh, is there spelling mistakes or um, it, is the child, I mean, skipping the lines and writing. So all this will help us to analyze the, the problem of the child and also to monitor and uh, see the improvement level. Uh, and again, let me tell you that just three to four lines only they'll have to write. Don't tax them all the more because they'll get fed up. Then they will not cooperate with you. So therefore, uh, little every day if they are writing, that is enough. And then possible praise and, you know, appreciation and that's it. Let the child go and play for some time and come back for the next activity. So this, the child will look, it, look at it as a game only. But for us, it is a really a, a writing exercise practice that we are giving them. Okay, so that is the second method. So the third tip would be, uh, give a topic. Uh, now the second method, as I said, they have to look at it and write it. Now this can be for little higher level kids or age-wise senior kids. Give a topic that really excites them. Re give a topic that, you know, uh, as it is writing is bad, no, writing is so boring. At the same, at that time, you are, you are asking the kids to write something which they are not at all interested in about you know, solar uh, system or something like that. They get irritated because they have to study, now they have to write and everything. Rather than that, you can ask them, you just Mickey Mouse, write about Mickey Mouse. Okay, whatever comes to you, they, they, they will be, it's because they like the topic, they, uh, they might be interested to write. Now this is how you can instill that interest to write. Okay, so then they will say the Mickey Mouse is such a loving one, you know, um, I, I love that mouse like anything. And, and like that they will write, they will make mistakes in that, but first let them take effort to write. Let them start loving writing, for which we need to excite them with uh, topics that they really like. It can be cartoons or we can say car, some of them are really interested, or a Barbie doll. Uh, whatever the child is interested in, we can ask the child to write. So it is instilling their imagination. Okay, now in this, you should not find mistakes and all. There will be mistakes which you can actually note it down. But then this is basically to instill their imagination and instill their interest. So, I um, mean, if you are fully focusing on finding out the mistakes, then they will lose interest uh, to imagine and think and write. So therefore, here we should stop finding mistakes. Let them write whatever they feel like writing. Okay, and uh, otherwise what we can do is that suppose they are not able to think much, then we can show some pictures of some cartoons or it can be some kind of a people in the picture, okay, a big giant man or a spider man and ask them to describe the picture, describe the person. The spider man is, um, uh, you know, very tall man like that and all. They will describe the person in the picture. So like that we can ask them and then we can ask the best thing is that we can take our own albums, you know, where the, 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 the child was very small and we were carrying the children and everything. We can show the album and say, hey, look at this, look at your uh, papa, look at your daddy. Now, I mean, uh, now, now remember, um, you, you write about your daddy. Now look at this photo. We can, we can ask them to uh, look at our own albums, our own photos and ask them to instill their imagination, kindle their thoughts and then ask them to write. Okay, and uh, or else like uh, uh, suppose we take them out for some place, we go out, okay, to a movie or uh, to a mall or beach or whatever. After two, three days we can say, now we went, you know, think what and all nice things happen. Just write about what, I mean, about this, you know, visiting the mall, you just write. So they will start from mall visit, uh, it is 
uh, I loved it. I ate pizza. Like that, they will write. So let them think and then let them love to write. Then they will slowly develop the habit of writing. This is how we have to instill the, we have to develop, the, uh, develop their interest in writing. If we don't do, we will stop writing. Okay, so therefore we really have to do. Sometimes we can see that the children when they come out, you know, when, when we ask them to write about uh, the, um, the weekend activity, they will be very excited to say because they had been there and they, they had ice cream. So they will be really excited to say. But then you say, no, 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 no I am not going to listen, you write. They will be interested to say because that is very easy, right? But you will have to say, uh, you write and then I will listen. So first let them put down whatever comes to their mind in writing. If they come first, tell it out to you now, then they will not write. So you will have to say, I am not going to listen. You write and then I will listen. So let them write a little bit and then you listen in detail as to what they are telling. Okay, so that way they will be forced. They, they are really excited so they will somehow ventilate it through writing. Okay, so these are some of the things that you can, this, this third tip is basically to uh, inculcate interest in them to inspire them to write. See, when you say writing itself, we think of homework. Every time the school gives homework and homework is most of writing only. Okay, and that uh, concept of homework itself is really bugging for the parents as well as for the children. Now here we have to uh, understand that they make a real big fuss and uh, the parents make a big fuss. The parents think that, oh my God, if they are not completing, I'll have to complete it. Otherwise, they will be in trouble and tomorrow teacher will be calling me. So sometimes it becomes the responsibility of the parents uh, to complete the homework. And they come from the office and they learn, then they think, oh my God, today so much of homework. The children may not be that disturbed. So somehow we'll have to, you know, make it a point to make them realize that this is your role. This is your responsibility. I'm just helping you. That's all. Now you should not take it up all for yourself. If you are really worried and if you are taking it up so much, the child will understand that and then the child will think, if even if I am not writing, they will write and give it for me. Okay, so therefore you should not get so disturbed. You should say, oh, only this much? Okay, come on, write. We'll, okay, you do it. Now we have to give, give the responsibility to them only. Suppose they really are very lazy and they don't write. Let them take the brunt of it. Next, them, next day, let them go to the school and then they will realize that my parents are not going to do it for me. I have to do it by myself, somehow or the other. Otherwise, it's going to be an insult for me. So therefore, this is something the parents have to really understand. Make them realize that it is your role, it is your responsibility. Okay, that is number one. And the number two is that, how to make it interesting. So first, we are, remember that, see, uh, for brushing your teeth and all, when we were bringing up the children, the children made a fuss for that also, right? They don't want to brush their teeth. In the morning, when they wake up, we say, okay, take the brush, okay, come do. They, they don't like it at all. But we somehow see to it to help them to brush their teeth. And then we see to it, they do it, right? And after a point of time, now we can see that now they are doing it automatically without even telling them. Now, something that they made a big fuss, now it has not become a fuss. Why? Because at the same time we were doing it and there was a routine and a time and there was a regularity in it. We did not miss out on any day. So the lesson the child learns is that this is something I'll have to do in the morning. So it gets registered. So the child will not stop making a fuss. Same way you can bring this habit of writing homework. So for which that regularity and a time has to be set for it. Not to be done at any time. So then the child will learn that this is the time for homework. Every day it will be there. I will have to do it. And something that they really made a fuss, then they will automatically give their time. They know that this is and they will start doing it. So please understand that. Don't think that this is going to be a you know, never ending a headache. No. If you are monitoring properly and disciplining them properly, this can be easily handled. Okay. So once, so along with, your, with the other tips that I gave you, uh, if, you, if they are in, interested in writing and if they are able to write it properly using the graph sheet method and if they are having a regular practice in writing, then writing a homework also will not become a big burden for them. Okay. I hope these points uh, will be very useful for you. Again, I am telling you, practice it. Only then it will become beneficial. Okay. Thank you and God bless.